Hi, the idea of the video is to give you an introduction to Google's Notebook LM. Not a pure theoretical one, but one out of actual experience. So I discovered Notebook LM a few months back and I'm using it as a knowledge database for Joscha Bach knowledge. So if you don't know him, basically there are lots of podcasts, presentation, interviews and stuff um, where I can use the transcripts and have that as data source. Of course, I could try and use any large language model and put the relevant sources as input and ask my questions. But even those with very big context window can only take around 1 million token. So that's very limited. And it makes it almost impossible to work with several sources at once. I also don't want to trust the information of the LLM pre-trained knowledge about Joscha Bach, uh, because that's, from my experience, a bad idea, especially when you go into details, because the amount of hallucinations will be increasing rapidly. Luckily, there is, as I already mentioned, the perfect solution for it, Notebook LM. And why is that so? Because of RAG, the Retrieval Augmented Generation. So let me give you a very brief introduction to that first. And that's perfect because we can use exactly that as an example. So I can use the RAG paper as input and use one of Notebook LM features and create a explanation video. And that brings us to what RAG actually is. It's a hybrid model, and the name tells you everything you need to know about how it works. It's a two-step process. First, when you ask a question, it retrieves the most relevant documents from its external library. Then, it takes those facts, looks at your original question again, and generates a completely new, fact-checked answer. All right, so how does this actually work under the hood? Let's meet the two key players in the system, the retriever and the generator. They're a real dynamic duo. It's a really clever two-part system. First up, you have the retriever. Think of it like a super fast librarian. It takes your question and in the original research, it scanned all 21 million documents from Wikipedia to find the best passages. Then it hands those documents off to the generator. The generator is like your subject matter expert. It reads your question, it reads the facts that the librarian found, and it weaves it all together into one single coherent fact-based answer. Okay, this was only a short snippet out of the whole video. As you can see, the quality isn't that great so far. Uh, it was talking about 21 million uh, Wikipedia entries, uh, which Rack could deliver in that example. Um, actually, Notebook LM as a free user allows you to to input 50 sources and if you have the subscription you can do 200 as a limit. Okay, now how to use Notebook LM. For my use case I already mentioned I'm mainly importing YouTube videos from Joscha Bach. Uh, so basically what you can do is you can press the add button and choose YouTube and just add YouTube URLs here. As you can see, you can only add one URL at a time, which is a bit annoying if you have hundreds of videos to add. So uh, for example, Joscha Bach has its o his own YouTube channel. He only has one video uploaded by himself, but he tries to manage some playlists and collects videos there. Uh, what I did is basically I used some external tool to extract the links from the playlist and then edit those manually. So the good news is someone from the Notebook LM Reddit released a Chrome extension recently and you can just install it. And now if you go to a playlist, for example, you can import the complete playlist either to an existing notebook or to a new one. 
Um, not all of the sources are available on YouTube, of course. So there are some podcasts um, which you can also download and just add the MP3 or the WAV file. Um, also here, he will automatically do the transcript. The thing is, those transcripts in either way are not perfect. So, for example, here you can see a prompt I just recently did. Can you find other transcript errors in regarding of naming? Um, and, for example, if you prompt that, he will find a lot of transcript errors which are clear to him. So one way to um, get around that issue is if you prompt something where you need or search for some specific name, you can just mention that since the sources are all uh, transcripts, he should keep that in regard and yeah, try to find maybe misspellings of the name too. And I think that will work quite okay. The other way you can go around that is, of course, um, you use, for example, Google AI Studio, where you can easily import YouTube videos. And maybe I should show that. So if you have Google AI Studio, you could take YouTube videos. So for example, I copy this video here. I add it. It takes a while. But you can already see the token count <laughs> even here with 1 million tokens is much too big. Um, you can try to prevent that if you go down and only scan like every 10th frame. Also you can keep it shorter if you go to low resolution. And now you can let Google AI Studio generate a much more accurate transcript and you can also ask to yeah inform about the slides in the background or inform about other special things which are happening in the video this of course takes a lot of time and with 100 sources um, yeah it's a bit <laughs> a bit tedious uh, but i started exactly that work and currently i'm trying to figure out if that's really better. Uh, as you can see here, I imported them as MD file, so markdown language. When I were importing them, I had the issue that for some reason I couldn't import TXT files. So they were, yeah, he just threw an error every time. It seems to be fixed right now, but yeah, a lot of sources are in the markdown. Um, this is an example. Here you can see a slide is displayed showing three noisy abstract images, a boat, a lake, an oil painting, and then Christian Kirsting. So you have more accurate names, you have information what's happening in the background, and a lot less errors. So higher quality transcripts might help to get better results. Okay, before we go on and talk about what you actually can do with Notebook LM, there are of course some other options what you can import. For example, websites, uh, plain text, but even Google presentations. And as I mentioned before, um, audio files, MP3, WAV, and stuff like PDF. So there is a lot of stuff which can be generated automatically from audio podcast transcripts, um, videos since a few days, mind maps and different kind of other documents, FAQ, work help, which are quite good and interesting, but let's focus on the main functionality. And in my opinion, the main functionality is that you can simply prompt from all your database and get accurate answers. For example, if I want to know what does Joshua Bach say about Noam Chomsky? So 
so as you can see he generated quite a lot of text so Yasha Bach holds a complex and critical yet deeply respectful view of Noam Chomsky recognizing him as one of the most brilliant influential intellects of his generation um, and you get from all the things he's saying the parts the sources where he got that information from and this is another good example as you can see this source was actually a german source and <laughs> another interesting thing is he found that even the transcripts says <laughs> norem tromsky ich kann also wenn norem tromsky vor mir steht ist es so ich halte den für einen der größten denker seiner generation <laughs> uh, really funny um, yeah but that's the main strength so you have actual information based on your actual sources you can save those information uh, so it's also stored in the rec database or you can just use it okay let's try something else in which way does Yosha Bach explain the bubble of nouns now we wait so actually um, I'm skipping a lot in this video but I would guess it takes up to one minute on such a big database depends on yeah what you search see that's a bit quicker <laughs> so here we find different ways how he explains the bubble of nouns so for example from an introspective nature and characteristic the bubble of nouns is a reflexive second order perception here again you can find where he's got the information from and of course you can get the whole video in this case and yeah yeah try to find exactly where he's saying that is a bit harder but yeah but also it's a functional role in coherence and organization and it's distinction from physical reality and simulation if you want to hear or see some examples of the videos it can generate i've already uploaded like four of them on youtube on my channel i will link it in the description and also from the podcast version which can be generated actually i uploaded one very long podcast so podcast so there are a few tricks how you get them longer it depends hard on the prompt because you can engineer your own prompt so first off you can choose the length to shorter normal or longer and then you can also try to engineer a prompt and make it longer so i've also uploaded one podcast and um, i also recreated one podcast because um, i just fed the transcript to google ai studio let it uh, rewrite to a single speaker and then in the generate media function there's also a speech generation um, where you can choose different speakers ready to build something awesome today awesome yeah i think i choose that one and yeah you can just add the text here and let it describe but in regards of length um, i had the feeling it's limited to around 10 minutes so i split it up in some blocks and merged it together you can also find that on my youtube page um, maybe also interesting is the mind map oh he's generating a new one uh, we can oh yeah you can see for like two months ago with 102 sources he created that mind map and you can 
explore that mind map. So extend those topics. And if you select one topic, so consciousness, maybe the hard problem, Um, then if you select one of those, he should start to prompt it. Okay, so discuss what those sources in the context of the hard problem can tell about the... Uh, once again, I'm sorry that it's not completely in English. But yes, you can also use the mind map to explore topics and get those translated. Um, in regards of the chat, as I mentioned before, you can prompt something and save it as note. You can have kind of a chat, but it's not like um, the normal chatbot. So we could try to ask how often does your Sherbach mention Genesis? <laughs> so he actually can tell me he mentioned Genesis 22 times across the provided sources. Genesis 1, yeah. Now, um, let's see if we can use it as a chat. It's there. Yeah, just to see if he gets the connection. And you can see, um, so he actually has the context still there. So what he means there, he is referring to Genesis. The creative spirit, Ruach Elohim, hovering over the waters. Okay. Yeah, so I really like the mind map. Um, the documents are interesting too. As you can see, I also saved some notes, for example, here. Um, I wonder if I can't see the prompt. But basically, the question must be, I asked for five hard questions with detailed information. So and that's exactly what I got there. Five interesting, deeper questions and answers to it. So that's a bit fun. You can <laughs> test yourself what you know and try to see if you align with uh, the answer of the AI. All right, this video is much longer than it should be. So if you want, just tell me how much you hated it in the comment section. And now to the totally not AI generated outro scene. Noteproc LM.